What's going on guys, Ryan with Jetta Patrol, back with another video today, something completely different. We're gonna look at why some figure photos look great and some, not so much. That's right guys, we're back. Hope you guys are excited for this one. It's gonna be fun and completely different than any other videos we've done. Uh, I've had a lot of requests to do like photography type videos. Today, I would like to tackle and have a discussion about photos of six scale figure head sculpts and how different lengths of lenses and uh, lighting techniques will affect how they look. And so when Hot Toys or any other figure manufacturer shows us promo photos, our initial reaction should be a little bit of tap the brakes and let's see what looks like in hand the majority of time. Now, we've, we've all seen the, the photos out there where you know people are going, oh, this, this promo photo, the head scope looks ridiculous. And then we get it in the hand and it goes, oh, it's not that bad. It actually looks pretty good. Today, I wanna to cover why that might be in some instances. And uh, also that'll be a lot of fun. So if you want this kind of stuff, you want some more of it, let me comment in the uh, comment section down below. Let's talk about it. So what I have done is I've broke out the battle damaged Mark 85. This is going to be our subject for today's experiment. And uh, I've got him here on his little diorama base. And yes, I have had him pose, except for the arm I've had down. I have had him pose like this pretty much since I got him. Uh, and that was always the intent. So I guess it could have been a statue and that would have been fine. But it is absolutely one of Hot Toys best six scale head sculpts. It is unbelievable. And for those who don't have it yet, just you're going to be happy when you get it. I'll just throw that out there. Okay. So what I've done today is I've taken photos at different focal lengths of this exact same portrait. I've actually loaded them into Photoshop right here. I've aligned them. So the uh, size and width of the head sculpt should look fairly similar. And we're going to talk about how we're going to look actually at how different focal lengths affect the uh, the head sculpt and how it looks like. So I've got it right here on the screen. You can look at this. We're going to start at 24 millimeters. We're going to go from 24 all the way to 200 millimeters. We're going to look at this, and it's going to be might be interesting for some of you guys who haven't uh, explored into the world of photography uh, very much. This is something we're very well aware of in portrait photography. We're dealing with actresses or models or just portraits in general. Uh, we're definitely aware of focal lengths, and it's uh, it's something to be. Uh, it's not really talked about in the six scale community, so I figured today let's uh, let's talk about that. Okay, let's roll. Let's look at this first one here. I took this first photo at 24 millimeters. Okay, 24 wide angle in the world of. I mean, I guess you could go like 16, 15 millimeters, 12 millimeters. You go super wide. That would have been ridiculous for this photo, but this is 24 millimeters, and uh, I, I think it's uh, you're going to see a stark difference as we go from 24 all the way to 200 millimeters. First thing we should notice is it actually looks somewhat decent, right? And one of the things with 24 millimeters and as we go through these different focal lengths is I want you to pay attention to the distance of the eyes to the back of the head. That's the, the distance we're gonna be looking at, okay? So 24 millimeters looks okay. Uh, you can notice in the background, if we talk about uh, backgrounds in this, you'll, we'll see how there's um, uh, some compression of the background due to the, uh, the distance of the figure. Uh, to the lens and just that characteristics there. Uh, but 24 millimeters doesn't look terrible. Uh, I do have a little bit of a kicker light on the right hand side and I'm using a, about a three foot softbox on the left hand side. So the, the key light is about three foot softbox. And then on the right, I just have an LED panel there to give a little uh, hit of light to that shadow side or else it'd be really dark. And I'll probably show it to you uh, later in the video. So this is 24 millimeters. All right, let's take a look at 25 millimeters, okay? All right, sorry, 35 millimeters. So I'm just gonna hide this one. 35 millimeters. Now, immediately you can tell the difference in the background. It's obvious, like there's no question or not what's going on. Uh, the, the, I've tried my best to get the head sculpt the same in the frame. So really the biggest difference you're gonna see is the background uh, as, the, uh, as that compression goes back uh, from 24 millimeters to 35 millimeters. However, there is, there is some difference in between the actual head of 25 or 24 and 35, okay? I want you to pay attention to, let's see if I can do this. I'll get me a little adjustment layer and uh, let's just do a, a brush here. We'll do something easy to spot. So let's do like, I don't know, we'll do purple or something like that, right? We don't need to brush that, that large. Uh, so let's, uh, let's do this. All right, so you ready? So I want you to pay attention to, oh, that's not even purple. That's that's white. Let's try purple. Pay attention to right here. This is what I want to pay attention to. Okay. So this is 24. 
this is 35. Look at specifically this zone right here. 24, this is 35, there's 24. Okay, so what's happening here is is the distance between the actual camera lens and the back of the ears and the forehead are changing. All right, so that's what's happening here and you're, you're seeing that. So that's where you're getting a little bit of distortion there in there and it's just the distance. It's not like the camera lens is bad. It's the distance between the figure, all right? And I'll just get an extra camera here. And the camera is changing. So this, let's say this was 24 millimeters. This is to get it in the same, uh, size head uh 24 you gotta back up to 35 so what's happened is that distance has doubled between uh 24 and 35. so that's kind of what's going on here and you're seeing that distortion is just based on the distance between the object and and the camera so this third 24 let's go down uh, or back up even further let's go to 50 millimeters let's see what that looks like so uh 50 uh 50 millimeters looks like this all right so we've got even more going on here you see that background the, the background appears to be getting closer to us because we're zooming in further so that the, the uh, lens uh, distortion effect the compression is actually coming forward in the background so there's 24 you can see how that background's way in the back and then i go down to 50 and it's starting to come closer when we get to 200 it's going to be even crazier right um so again the forehead area this is the uh this is the area where we're going to be paying uh, most attention to get to my adjustment layer there uh we probably don't need all that but uh this is this is the section so there's 50 24 and you can see how the ears and the head is wrapping around right and that's that distance between the camera and the object and as you get closer to things that's how how it works so you can already see that depending on which camera choice the photographer is using uh, it, it can affect the shape of the head while we get, uh, if you take an iPhone photo, I got an iPhone 11 something here. If you take an iPhone photo and you take a, with the, uh, the lens in the back, you, and you do like a selfie, you'll have that stretched head to cone head type effect. That's what's going on. You're really close to the lens. Therefore you're getting that effect, right? So there's 50 millimeters. Let's keep going. Let's have some fun with this. Let's check out 70 millimeters. There we go. So I'd say between that 50 and 70 millimeter, it looks pretty good. It's definitely more appealing than 24 millimeters. Like, right. It's definitely more appealing. I feel it's got a more flattering appearance. And what's happening is the back of the head and that background is being pulled forward. So if you look at that, you'll see like the distance between the <clears throat> the back of the head and the nose, if you will, are coming closer together and it's kind of compressing uh, the head. Take a look at this 24 millimeters one more time and then we'll back back to 70. So pay close attention to the ears and the nose, okay? So here's 24. See how that forehead feels like it's coming forward? It's because the lens is closer to that uh, uh, object. And then we go back to 70 and it's kind of flattening back out a little bit. It's actually pretty neat when you start thinking about this, okay? This is why I'm not a big fan of iPhone photography for action figures or just in general for like portrait stuff uh, because of this distortion effect and you've gotta, you gotta be mindful of this, right? All right, so let's go to 85. 85 is like the king in the portrait world. Most people like 85 because it's a flattering look. So say somewhere between 50 and 85, but typically 85 is a good for life-size human portraiture. Uh, 85 is a good, um, good uh, focal length to shoot at this looks great absolutely looks great right uh the, the the proportions look accurate they look uh pleasant to the eye we don't have any crazy distortion between that forehead popping up like we do if we back up to the 24 right there right don't have that and uh then we've got it just looks a bit more proportioned and you, you can also see in like the shoulder armor of this figure if i back this up 24 it feels like the shoulders are pulled back a little bit and if i go back to 85 they feel a little bit more forward a little bit more wide and uh it's actually pretty interesting so let's go let's let's go a little further let's go to 105 okay and bella and tucker are barking at somebody downstairs if you can possibly hear that <laughs> let's go to uh, let's go to 105. all right not a huge difference between 85 and 105 right not a huge difference not a huge difference at all you are seeing that background compression come forward a little bit but not a huge difference between those two and let's go forward to 135. oh there we go so there's 135 a little bit of a difference 105, 135, and I think maybe when I actually, here's 135, when I actually moved the camera back, it might have tilted the lens down a little bit, so we might be getting a little bit of a, a different angle on the figure than I had with the, um, uh, the 105, but generally also a good looking. And then if we take it all the way out, 
to 200 millimeters. And I am shooting, for those who are wondering, on an EOS R, on a full frame camera. This is not a crop sensor. This is uh, F4, I think is what I shot this at, for those who are curious. Um, and there here's 200 millimeters. So it's gonna make a stark difference between, that was funny, stark, wow, pun, not intended, but it worked out there. A stark difference between 200 millimeters and we go all the way back to 24 millimeters, just right here. Huge, huge difference between those two, right? 24 millimeters, 200 millimeters, right? 24, 200. So the reason I wanted to bring this up is because when we're looking at promo photos from Hot Toys in general, because they're the ones that give us the most, right? Um, and we're looking at these portraits and we go, oh man, that portrait looks terrible. Or uh, it, it, the, it doesn't, it's not shaped right or, or that kind of stuff. It, it really, it, it's not telling the full story because we don't have this knowledge here, which I'm trying to share with you guys. Hopefully it's interesting. Um, but I feel like this is totally something we need to take in consideration when looking at head sculpts on promos. And this is why so many times we can still look at the promo photos and we go, oh, that looks terrible. And then we get in a hand and go, wow. That's actually pretty freaking amazing. I think it's super interesting. But I do have one more thing I wanna show you that has to do with lighting. So let's jump into that. All right, let's have a little fun with this. I actually am using currently about a three foot softbox on uh, your left. You see that bright light coming from his left side. And I have a little LED panel on the right as a kicker to get some, uh, brighten up the shadows on the right side of his face, which is a little behind the figure kind of glancing across that his, uh, what you're looking at his right uh, jawline there. So otherwise it would be really, really dark. Uh, I guess, let me just show you what it would look like. All right. See right there. So there's that kicker light and, uh, that's how that is kind of just kind of brighten off that right side. So I'm gonna turn that back on. All right. It does make a world of difference, honestly, but I, I want to, uh, I guess I want to take a look at the position of the light in relation to how it reacts to the face. So we look at these Hot Toys photos, these promo photos, we can get an idea of kind of what's going on and why maybe your photos look um, the way they look and maybe how they could look a little better. So this is gonna be a uh, three foot softbox on the uh, camera left, up about 45 degrees pointing down and then obviously that kicker on the right. So I'm going to be using this little LED Godox, uh, whatever this is, little M1 thing, little LED bell, boop, it's bright. So there's that, I'm gonna be using that. So I'm gonna kill softbox. There we go. So now all we have is the kicker light on the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the LED uh, light that I've got here and position it pretty much exactly where where the soft box is, okay? So you get a, obviously it's a smaller light, it's a little harsher light, but you get the idea, right? So if I was to take this light and put it directly right here in front of the camera and just add it, look at how the shape of the face changes and how that light uh, bounces off the face. It is definitely not as flattering. Um, it is <laughs> washed out, it is boring. There's no shadows except for that one slight shadow under the jawline. Uh, otherwise, it, this is what you call flat lighting. Not, 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 very, uh, not very flattering. So if I move it back over here to the left, so that's much more flattering where it's at, right? So this is straight on. So if I was to go underneath, look at this. This is what you would, it, back in the day would be like horror lighting for scary movies. And they don't really use this too much anymore, uh, but they used to. So you get the shadows that are going up and uh, instead of down, and it looks weird and uh, it just looks ridiculous. And you see how these photos, if you, wherever you present in your light, whether you use a window light or you know LED light, whatever it is, um, you know, it could affect how your photos look. So there's that. So if I want to put it directly above, like, all right, so there's that. This is literally directly in front of him, but pointing straight down in front of the face. That's not bad, right? It's not bad. It's definitely better than, than this. That's not flattering at all, but there's that. So you can see how the light, where it goes, I'm just gonna rotate this around. You can watch how the face changes shape as I move this light around. And what you're doing is you're watching shadows move. Oh, there's my arm in the shot. And I go straight on. Like that doesn't look good at all straight on. So if your photos look flat, that's probably because your lighting's flat, right? So shadows are your friend. So when we look at, uh, I'm gonna turn the soft box back on. If you're looking at the photos that the bloggers make for the Hot Toys photos, 
Uh, you'll see the different types of lighting they got going on. Sometimes they're using two lights like this. Sometimes they got three or four or five or whatever it is. And then obviously they're shooting on a green screen, blue screen, gray background, and they're doing uh, com photo composites and doing those crazy backdrops, which is fine. But uh, if uh, the <laughs> you can see how just changing the lighting, changing the lens and the distance from the camera to the object you're photographing or videoing will have a huge impact on how the product, the figure, the head sculpt, whatever it is, looks uh, in the uh, promo photos. So this is why I say we kind of got to see things in person and uh, make a judgment call on head sculpts because you can be deceived based on the, the photographer's camera choice, uh, lighting choice, and f-stops and all that kind of fun stuff. Hope this was helpful to you guys. If it was, put a comment in the uh, comment section down below, leave a like, and subscribe if you haven't already done that. And if you want to support the channel on Patreon, that would be awesome too. Check that out. Links in the description below. As always, click what you like. See you next time.